Yeah, the people they won't leave What is threatening about divesting in one piece The problem is Losers! Losers! Right away. Loser! I want to see the United States government die in my lifetime They used humanitarian aid trucks. The most heroic and moral army in the world used humanitarian aid trucks to disguise an attack on the Nezaret refugee camp, unaliving over 200 Palestinian individuals in exchange for four alive and well hostages. And for one moment, I'd like you to imagine if the roles were reversed. If a certain group infiltrated Israel, saying they were something like a humanitarian aid truck, in an attempt to free the thousands of Palestinians being subject to military law, being held in prisons, not always knowing what charges are against them, being separated from their family, subject to torture, zero legal representation, everyone would be talking about it. Let's also not forget the, I think, four hostage exchange deals rejected by Israel, one as recent as May. They'll talk about hostages when they have 10 times as many in worse conditions. We'll talk about hostages when their own government is rejecting the exchange deal and they will never put the same value on a palestinian life as they do on another there's no angle there's no angle to justify this there is no war in bossing say there is no war in bossing say no war crimes done by the CIA. No global feud for which we pay. If you think that, wow, you're crazy. There is no war in Bossing Say. And there's no genocide we fund. No dictator, we're giving guns. We're not shooting people as they run. No bloodshed underneath our sun. 
And there is no crisis in the DRC? Of course no child slavery from cobalt mines with subsidies to make Tesla's monstrosities. Babe, again, you're being crazy. There is no trouble across the sea. And there's nothing wrong here at home. No homelessness that I've been shown. No brutal cops or kids getting shot. Or dangerously high living costs. While we're at it, there is no sun. There is no moon. No reason for you to leave this room. No reason for you to look outside. There is no fucking genocide. <laughs> Sorry. I meant to say, there is no war in Bossing Se. I have papers to prove I'm not infected. Hi, I'm Saul Goodman. Did you know that you have rights? The Constitution says you do. It's ha, 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 ha. Hello? Ha, 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 ha. This is your mother. Ha, ha, Are you there? Ha, 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 ha. So Israeli and American troops disguised themselves as humanitarian aid trucks launching from the pier, which America said it built for humanitarian aid to get into Gaza, infiltrate a refugee camp, kill 200 people to rescue four, and this is being presented as a victory by the media. And then to cap it all off, Israel tells everyone who fled to the nearby hospital with severe wounds due to their illegal raid on a refugee camp to evacuate the hospital because they're targeting that next. And people will tell you with a straight face that the IDF is the quote unquote most moral army in the world. There's a lot of people who still don't understand why Aaron Bushnell did what he did and it's literally because of this right here. At every step of the way in this massacre, America was directly involved. Your tax dollars, your media, your government are all invested in perpetrating a genocide and they should all see their time in the hate. Question is, how are we going to make sure that that happens? So this is military ships are trying to shoot on the people on the beach and on the fishermen all these safe zones lie these Israeli military ships right there they are keep shooting on, on the tents now Oh cool, while we're weaponizing that in order for political aims, Israeli journalist Ari Shavit, after visiting a Palestinian camp, or as you guys call it, a prison, found it very similar to a certain historical event. They wrote, most Palestinians are awaiting trial. Most were arrested because they were throwing stones or were said to be members of illegal organizations. Many are in their teens. Among them here or there are some boys who are small and appear to be very young. The prison has 12 guard towers. Some Israeli soldiers are struck 
and deeply shaken by the similarity between these and certain other towers about which they learned at school. The unjust analogy with those other camps of 50 years ago won't go away. And I too, who have always abhorred this analogy, who have always argued bitterly with anyone who so much as hints at it, I can no longer stop myself. The associations are too strong. Like a believer whose faith is cracking, I go over and over again in my mind in the long list of arguments, the list of differences. But then I realize that the problem is not in the similarity. For no one can seriously think that there is a real similarity, but that there isn't enough lack of similarity. The problem is that the lack of similarity isn't strong enough to silence once and for all the evil echoes, the accusing images. Maybe in the Shin Bet, secret police, is to blame for this, for the arrest it makes and what it does to those arrested. For almost every night after it has managed in its interrogations to quote unquote break a certain number of young men, the Shin Bet delivers to the soldiers a list with names of friends of young men. Then the soldiers go out almost every night to the city and come back with children of 15 or 16 years of age. The children grit their teeth, their eyes bulge from their sockets. In not a few cases, they have already been beaten, and the soldiers crowd together in a reception room to look at them when they undress, to look at them in their underwear, to look at them as they tremble with fear. And sometimes they kick them, one kick or more, before they put on their new prison clothes. Or maybe the doctor is to blame. You wake him up in the middle of the night to treat him, to treat the ones who have just been brought in. A young man, barefoot, wounded, who looks like he's having an epileptic fit, who tells you that they beat him just now in the back and the heart, over the heart and the stomach. There are red ugly marks over his body. The doctor turns to the young man and shouts at him. In a loud raging voice he says, May you die. And then he turns to me with a laugh. May they all die. Or maybe the screams are to blame. At the end of the watch, you are sometimes hear the horrible screams from the other side of the fence of the interrogation section. Hair-raising screams, literally hair-raising. In Gaza, our general secretary services therefore amount to secret police. Our tournament facilities clearly run gulags. Our soldiers are jailers. Our interrogators torturers. In Gaza, it is all straightforward and clear. There's no place to hide. So, uh, yeah, as long as we're weaponizing that and you're weaponizing it to do a genocide, I'm going to keep on calling what you're doing a holocaust because it clearly is. And remember kids, the next time that somebody tells you the government wouldn't do that, oh yes they would. Five Nights at Freddy's has begun working with an openly Zionist toy company, which matters more now than it ever has. Let's talk about it. So in 2025, Five Nights at Freddy's will be releasing products with Jazzwares, a premium company for toys and plush and all that stuff. This is the CEO of Jazzwares, and he is openly Zionist and openly donates money to Israel. Now, I'm willing to bet some of you don't understand why that's a bad thing, and there's no shame in that. Every time you ask about this, people are like, oh, well, it's a complicated issue, but it's really not. So I'm going to go over it and explain why supporting Israel and donating money to Israel is a morally bad thing. Before World War I, the Ottoman Empire had control over the Palestine area, and then after World War I, the British took control of that area. Before World War II, there were talks of securing an ethnostate for Jewish people. An ethnostate is when your citizenship is is determined by your ethnicity, so in this case you would have to be ethnically Jewish to live there. Around this time, the UK started moving Jewish people into this area and pushing Palestinians out. Now, after World War II, the UK decided to let the United Nations deal with the issue of Palestine, and they decided that over half of Palestine, especially the good land, was going to be given to this Jewish ethnostate, and so they pushed all of these Palestinian people out. In 1948, 
Israel was named a nation for the first time. Think about how recent that is. 750,000 Palestinians were violently kicked out of their own country. Israel is still trying to secure all of Palestine. They want Israel to basically be what Palestine was and they don't want any Palestinian people to be there. So another 40,000 Palestinians have been killed in recent times, mostly women and children. Israel is trying to eradicate Palestinians and take over what's left of their land. This is not okay obviously. So essentially, if you're sending money to Israel right now, you are funding the bombs that are killing innocent people. Everybody knows that Five Nights at Freddy's is an infinite money glitch. It makes a ridiculous amount of money. In fact, that's its primary motive is to make money. So if this company gets a hold of the Five Nights at Freddy's license, which they already have, they're going to make so much money. They're going to make a ridiculous amount of money. This is really bad because a lot of Five Nights at Freddy's fans who don't support Israel may buy these products not even knowing the company and, and their beliefs. So when you see in 2025 that Jazzwares is producing Five Nights at Freddy's merchandise, I beg of you, do not buy it. I don't care how if it's going to be cool or, or like lore accurate, I don't care. Do not buy from them. Last note, I want to make it clear that this was not Scott Cawthon's decision. He licenses Five Nights at Freddy's out to this company, which then licenses it out to a bunch of different companies. So this was not directly his decision. However, based on his previous political beliefs, it's very likely that if this was brought to his attention and fans were complaining about it, he wouldn't care. I mean, for God's sake, he didn't care that he was working with them and defended them. So it's very likely that if this was brought to his attention, he would be like, I don't care. I want to keep working with them just like he did with Pinky Pills. So it's, I don't even know if it's worth it to do that. I just think that we should boycott this type of Five Nights at Freddy's merch. You're not going to start producing Five Nights at Freddy's stuff until 2025. But in 2025, please pay attention to the little company logos on the bottoms of the tags of the Five Nights at Freddy's stuff that you get because some of them may be funding a genocide.